Um, my name is Lee Chantel and today we're going to talk about promoting veganism online. Now I've had a chat to a few of you before and we brought up a few things in regards to online stuff and maybe negativity and how to deal with people online. I gave a talk here yesterday that was about online etiquette and dealing with negativity online. So I would suggest that a lot of you have a look at that because it covers a lot of what we've had a few conversations about just now. Um, I'll put them up on my vivalavegan.net YouTube channel and um, I'll also link them on this, this event for Bournemouth and the Dorset Vegans page. So just keep an eye out for that in the next week or so. Okay, so um, what we're going to cover today are a few things here. So please feel free to take photos of the slides. There's a lot of information there for you. Take photos of me too, don't mind. Um, so what we're going to go over is the best channels that we can use. Um, do a bit of a social media audit, see where you're at with your channel or your pages. Um, moving forward with a plan, why visuals are important, in particular your own branded visuals. Some shareable content ideas about setting goals, committing to them. Um, some online etiquette and tips for taking time out. Now, um, why I'm talking about this is because I've been involved in marketing and promotion for many years. And that started off when, in my previous life, I was going to be a rock star. So I released um, CDs and promoted all that sort of stuff. And when the internet first came out, I had a website as well to promote my CDs. Um, I've also had a not-for-profit called Green Earth Group that I ran in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm from. And we put on um, Australia, uh, Brisbane's first vegan festival and we got three to 4,000 people just um, using online marketing and very grassroots sort of stuff. And I've done a lot of other events since then. Oops. I've also been doing a lot of content creation um, and social media and I've been doing that since about 2009. I'm now focused more on the consulting aspect and instead of running things for people I like to show them how to do it so they're empowered to do it rather than just letting me do it for them. No one learns like that. So um, I give a lot of lectures and consulting and speaking to businesses, to schools, to events on things including social media, social media marketing, online etiquette, how to be nice to people online and um, a lot of things like that. I'm also really interested in technology and online security so that's one of my favourite things to talk about too. And the vegan stuff. Um, I've run a blog called vivalavegan.net since 2005 and it has over a decade's worth of information so if you haven't heard of it make sure you check it out. It's more an archival based site now, I just don't have the time to um, put as much work into it as I did. I've been vegan um, for over 20 years, I just fin um, um, celebrated my 20th year in January with a potluck at the park and um, so I've got a lot of experience to share with you. Um, one of, I've got a lot of books and ebooks I've released too and if you're interested in veganism in regards to athletes and health, my latest book is called um, Expert Tips from Vegan Athletes, Fitness Fanatics and Exercise Enthusiasts. And one of the reasons I'm over this side of the world is that it sells very well over this side of the world. Okay, let's get into some statistics. This is a few things what happens online in 60 seconds. So it's broken down into YouTube, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and there's so many different things that happen online. This is like tweets, interaction, people that are retweeting, people that are liking things and sharing things. So much is happening and it's changing if you can see from the middle 2014 to 2016. It's changing, it's getting bigger and bigger. And there's just so, so many tools that you can use. There's so many websites, there's so many sites, there's so many things that make um, our activism and our promotion much easier. And I'm going to talk about ve veganism promotion in particular because we're at a vegan event. And um, it's just a really effective way to show people about the movement, to show people about what you're interested in and hopefully that they will care about some of those as well. 
And I really want you to think about how you can encourage people to be better and to learn more and to do better and promote veganism on a larger scale, okay? And um, there's so many social media sites. Can you just, I don't know how many are in that picture there, but there's over 200 social media sites. Now, who's on Facebook here? What about Twitter? YouTube, Google Plus, my favorite. Um, what else have we got? Instagram, Pinterest. Okay, so that's just a few. <laughs> and do you really need to be on all of them? That's one thing we'll talk about today as well. Now, if you have a look at the difference between then and now, people used to um, send a press release to mainstream media. Mainstream media may or may not report it, and then it would go to the public. Nowadays, we can go to social media and it's linking people to, to the information so you can see what you want to see, what you want to spread, and there's not really anyone controlling that anymore, which can be good and can be bad. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I say to people all the time in regards to um, information on social media, even music and art and people, you know, nowadays we really have to search for the good stuff. You really have to search for it. And it's out there, I can, I can guarantee you that, but sometimes you have to search beyond what everyone else is sharing. So why is social media great? It's really easy to share things nowadays and it's really good to um, focus, to encourage people to be involved in the process or to let them in on your process. So for example, um, you have a vegan shoe range and you're just about to launch a new shoe, what colours should we do? You put out to your, your followers, what colours would you like? You've got four different choices. People get involved in choosing which colour they like and then you release the red colour and everyone's like, oh, I voted for that, that I'm going to buy that shoe. So see how you're engaging people and putting people in the process. It's really more, more cost saving now, um, but I would note that to be seen on Facebook, you do have to do a bit of paid advertising. So the cost saving stuff may not be as cost saving as it used to be. And if you think about all the tools that we can use to share things online or to create videos, articles, blogs, it's quite easy and it's cheap to have these tools. So whether you've got a video, video camera, tripods, internet, computers, laptops, they're quite, they're more affordable than they used to be for most people. And it's much easier to spread things. And it just controls the popular opinion. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Right. And um, we're just talking about why social media is good and effective and what we can do. So, um, sorry about that image there. So people aren't looking to mainstream media, they're not looking to parents, they're not looking to politicians, they're not looking to newspapers for guidance anymore. People are looking to each other. What does that person think? I like that person, I follow that person. I want to hear what they think. I want to hear what my peers think. That's what it's good for now. Um, and people ask me all the time, what channel should I use? There's so many channels, these are just what, 12 listed here, and there's hundreds, so what should you choose? If you have a look based on how many people use a channel, that's a good way to start. And then I would say, Facebook, I don't really like Facebook, it's quite painful, I think, but you have to be on Facebook because, as most people are on Facebook, that means your followers or your the people you're marketing something to will be on Facebook. So you have to be on Facebook. Um, I really love Google Plus. I was one of the first vegan pages on Google Plus. So I've got quite a few followers on there, but a lot of people don't use it. If you're really into tech sort of stuff, that's most people that use it. Instagram is really big at the moment and I've seen a lot of people will get a lot of interaction from Instagram. Um, Twitter, also, I really love Twitter, it's one of my favourites. I don't know if I'd necessarily encourage people to create a new Twitter channel if they haven't already, because it seems to be going down a bit, there's not as much interaction. Um, and YouTube's also really important. Okay, not sure. Is 
asked you me to install something. Okay. That's better. Okay, so when now you've got some YouTube channels or you've got some social media channels, you want to know how to use them, what you should do. So um, my top tips or my top three things that I hope that you focus on or that you take away from today. Oh, well, there's lots of tips, but this will be the first tip. So um, three things to focus on is creating content, your own content best. The next thing is to schedule or to post. And the next thing is to interact with people. Okay, so if you think those things, they're the things you want to do all the time. Creating the content, scheduling, posting the content, and interacting with people. So the term social media marketing, what word out of those three do you think is the most important? Marketing. I don't know. But Try again. Okay. I've got social media marketing. Social. Social, yes. Yeah. And that that's the thing, people forget. It's meant to be a social thing, we're meant to be talking and we're meant to be having conversations with people. We were talking before about, you know, um, people that are really rude or negative in regards to veganism. You don't want to be preaching to them and marketing and pushing something on all them on them all the time. You want to be engaging with them and having the conversation. So try and think of those aspects. Um, you want to be sharing things on a regular basis and it's much easier if you can commit to things at a particular time rather than just putting, doing something all at once and then forgetting about it for the next six months. And just really think outside the square to have your own unique focus. Um, I've just got a couple of slides with the best times to post online because people always ask me this. And we don't have the time to go through um, like analytics or return on investment sort of strategies today. But I just note, these are the best times it's saying to post on Facebook, which is from co-schedule. And um, they're saying, so Sunday at 9 a.m. you get about 32% higher engagement. And then you've also got Saturday at 3 p.m. And this used to be Wednesday 1 p.m. used to be the best sort of time. But I would also note that if you have your own page, um, that you look, at what times are the best for your own page. So this is a good guide, somewhere to start, but if you're posting things, you can see what's most effective. Is a visual most effective? Did I get more likes when I posted the video? Did they like those quotes that I did? Something like that. And what time did I post them? So have a look at your own stuff to how it, how it works the best. And there's a Twitter um, information as well. So um, that's saying, that it's more effective um, on t at 12 p.m. on a Sunday, 3 p.m. on Wednesday, and afternoon on Friday and Saturday. So, um, we just how many people here have Facebook pages that they run? Okay, and a few people. So, um, there's a lot of information about pages. But you can you can still learn something from it, and um, maybe even your friends or family that have their own pages, you might want to give them some tips as well. So I just wanted to think about I'd give so when I do con consults for clients or when I give talks to people about channels, the first thing I like to do is find out where they're at. Okay, so what are they doing? What are they sharing? How how are they doing it? How much interaction are they getting? Um, so go through what you've got. Go through, are all, the, are all the URLs for each channel the same? Like Twitter, is it, um, say, vivalavegan.net? Is Instagram the same? Is Facebook the same? Uh, have you got the same logo? Uh, is it all branded the same? Are the colors the same? The headings or the banners at the top, are they all the same? This is a great start if they're not. So focus on all those sort of things. What about your about and your bio? A lot of people don't update those very often. You really need to update those. Are the links working that you're sharing? A lot of people don't seem to um, follow the links. And you know, your own brand and content is really important. That's great to be sharing. Anyone can share a meme that you know thousands or millions of other people have shared, but if it's your own content that you've created, you're showing that you're an expert in the field and people are wanting to go to you. What sort of interaction are you getting? 
what sort of things are getting the most interaction? And are you responding when someone comments or gives you feedback as well? That's really important. And how do you know that things are working? And I was talking about return on investment. So you can see things like Google Analytics, Facebook do some analytics too. And they're really important to check out those pages. And so I guess you just have to work out what you want to do with social media. Do you want more followers? Do you want more shares? Do you want someone to join your, um, your blog or to make money from it or to um, sign up for something? So I normally say to people, and I sit them down, what content have you got? What content have you got from your business or your group that you can share right now? And that can be photos, that can be videos, that can be quotes, that can be feedback from people, so many different things. And it's putting all of those together in folders so that you've got all that information. Then from there you work out what do I need to create. And I create a lot of content for people as well. So when you've worked that out, work out some sort of schedule to share it. So for example, every Monday you share videos. Every Thursday you're sharing a new blog. Every Friday you're sharing quotes, things like that. So break it all down. And um, work, I use a program called Hootsuite that's really good that I can see all of um, my own social media channels and my clients' social media channels at once. I can see who's interacted and I can interact back if I need to. But I would also suggest that you have to go and sign into all these channels as well. And um, know, if you don't know what to do, if you have absolutely no idea what you're going to share, have a look at people that are doing similar things in your area. Find out what works best for them. Now have a look at this, why people follow brands. These are reasons why people would follow a brand on social media. And the most um, the biggest reason is that people are interested in their product or their service. Then you've got interest in promotions, entertaining, some sort of incentive, interest in the industry to communicate with their brand and friends and followers, friends like their content. And um, keep in mind a lot of people if only follow people online or brands online so they can communicate with them because they know they'll get an answer, mostly, <laughs> quite quickly. And this is why people unfollow brands. So keep this in mind. Too many promotional messages. So if you're sharing something every day, buy my ebook, buy my new ebook. Have you seen my new ebook? How boring is that? What are you getting out of that? If I'm following your page and I'm just getting promotions about your ebook all the time, you're not giving me anything I can learn from. So keep that in mind. We want to be sharing stuff with people so that they're getting something from your brand. And I just want to give you some ideas about what you can create. The biggest thing is to focus on visuals. Most people don't read text anymore. Um, who here reads books like in their physical, physical books? Yeah, I know not many people do nowadays. I love reading and I love words and. Um, it's really important to get our message across to people that maybe can't read, don't have skills of being able to read, don't like to read, are dyslexic. You know, there's so many reasons that people might not want to read or enjoy reading. So one of those ways is to create visuals or visually represent what you're trying to say in words. Now, you can do things like, um, you know, instead of writing a blog, you could speak that. You could film yourself speaking that. And Pete, that could be a podcast, that could be a video. And um, for quotes, I like to use an image and put the text into an image. So it's not just text you're sharing, you're making your quote a visual. Do you get that? Yeah. And um, I suggest a website called pickmonkey.com. And also, I use Keynote because I have a Mac, but you can also use PowerPoint if you have a PC. And with those programs to create slides, like what, I'm create, what I've am what i got up here, 
you can just drag images onto that and you can put text on top of it. So for someone, I'm, I don't have any graphic design skills whatsoever and my graphic design friends sometimes don't like some of the things I've created, but it's really easy to do and you can do it in a couple of minutes. You probably have it on your computer as well. If you're creating, if you take photos, if you have your own um, creations that you're sharing, you might want to watermark them as well. Because there's a lot of people that just um, share people's information but don't actually um, say who it's by. <clears throat> and don't forget to share them everywhere. Um, here's a good example of a collage that I created. I'm um, recently the president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, which is my home state in Australia. And this is a collage I created of our um, committee. So photojoiner.net. And all you have to do is put in the different images. You can choose, like, see the border, the white thing in between. You can choose how thick they are or how thin. And that was quite easy to create. This is where I create my quote, behappy.me. And um, you just put in the quotes, like I just put in over here, use, use more visuals, and it comes on the side. You can choose which color, you can choose which font. And I use that really easily to um, just say something quickly. And it, yeah, you're limited to how much text you can use on that, which is why PowerPoint or Keynote is better for long text. But that's a really good and easy way to create visuals. And like I said, your own content, your own created, branded content, much better than all the other stuff out there. And you want to be sharing visuals, you want to be sharing information, you want to be sharing events, you want to be giving people and your followers information. And um, remember that what you share on, say, Twitter, you also want to share it on Facebook, you also want to share it on Instagram. But keep in mind that as different channels use different ways of doing things. For example, Twitter is really big on hashtags. Does everyone know what a hashtag is? So it's just like the pound symbol or above the three or the thing. We ha I have it above the four, but we don't have a pound or a euro sign on my computer. So I don't know where. Do you have a pound? Do you have a hashtag on your usually key? next to the enter key. Oh yeah, okay. There you go. Around there. So over here you've got it next to the enter key. You learned something myself today. <laughs> and um, so if you use a hashtag, it's linking whatever you use. So for example, hashtag vegan, if you click on the word that's hashtagged, it will link you to all the other people who've mentioned that word. And it's really good. This is one of the reasons I like Twitter because when something's happening like a live event, say like a sport event or even like a festival or something, you can create a conversation with other people that are using that same hashtag. And hashtags also big on Instagram. Whereas on Twitter, they say about five, five hashtags per post. On Instagram, you're encouraged to have up to 30. And on Facebook, they do have hashtags, but not necessarily used that much. And a lot of people don't understand hashtags on Facebook. So keep in mind um, things that you need to share and what you need to do. For example, Pinterest and Instagram, it's more visual, visually based. So you need more visuals, whereas Facebook, Google+, more text. And encourage people to share what you've created. Hey, what do you think of this? Do you like this? Can you comment on this? Can you retweet? Can you, you know, things like that. You want to encourage people to be involved. Um, here's, some, here's some tips for what to create. So your own website or blog is really important. You have control over that. You can do whatever with that. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you know, they're allowing us to use it at the moment, but may or may not. And things like, say, Facebook, with pages, only 1% organic reach for your followers on Facebook at the moment. And organic reach means if I post something on my vivalavegan.net page, the people that are following me, only 1% of my followers are going to see that organically. If I paid for that, then you can get more. So that's what I was saying before about it's a bit of pay to play nowadays with Facebook. And um, Facebook own Instagram now too, so I'm sure that's going to happen in the future. 
Um, so focus on some things for your website like content, articles, blogs, interviews, ebooks, and presentations, visuals. There's so many different things you can create. And like I was saying before, social media, it's all about social, being social. So you want to be asking questions, you want to be responding when someone answers to you. You want to be engaging with people. You want to be using the plus sign if you're on Google Plus. You want to be using the at sign if you're on most of the other channels. And we are talking about some groups before, some Facebook groups. It's really important if you're in a particular industry to get to know other people, follow other groups, get involved with that. And um, one thing as well, if you have a website, make sure you collect email addresses. Email marketing is very, very important. A lot of people tend to forget that with the social media nowadays. We want to give people value. Like I was saying before, with promoting your ebook every five minutes, that's not giving anyone value. You want to be the channel someone goes to to get their information for vegan stuff, for health stuff, for coaching, for spirituality. You want to be that person. People go and get, and I would put in there, positive information about these things as well. And yeah, before you post something, here's, here's a few things to ask yourself first. Is it beneficial to others? Will someone get something out of it? And more importantly, will someone want to share it? Because you want to be creating shareable content. And um, if you have people that are all working on the same group or the same page together, take it in turns what people like. Say, for example, Vegetarian Vegan Society, we've got a few people who love Facebook, so they run the Facebook page. We've got someone who likes Instagram, they do Instagram. A couple of us like Twitter, so we do Twitter. And we just divide it between people. And um, you just need to be sharing visuals and you need to be sharing different things all the time. And link to your other channels. Email signatures are really good too. If you put in your email signature link to your quote you love or a book you love or a documentary to check out. And just encourage everyone to share. Um, here's a couple of things we're talking about making money online and from blogs. So maybe think about this sort of thing. So your own owned media is things like your website and your digital goods. So when I say digital goods, I mean like ebooks and creation, things like that. You've created yourself like your own copyright even. And your owned, your earned media is your reach so the people that you can get to the seo which is search engine optimization which is related to your website as well social media and your mailing list and then the stuff that you pay for is your advertising so your google adwords your facebook advertising your twitter advertising things like that um, here's some ideas for what you could share online so if you want to create a conversation, maybe ask some questions. If you want to educate and inform, let's share some podcasts, let's share some articles. If you want to share some visuals, let's create those quotes with that um, Be Happy the thing I told you about. If you want to link to your website, share some articles, your blogs, videos, things like that. If you want to gauge people's opinion, ask them, what do you think about my shoe colours? What do you think about what I'm doing next? One of my books, I actually um, asked people for their, their advice on what the title should be. So I had quite a few people give me ideas for book titles and then we voted on it and it was, um, there's a vegan in the kitchen it was the end result, which was a recipe book. Um, if you want to entertain, you know, there's videos, there's music, presentations. And if you want to be inspirational, inspirational quotes are great. I love a good inspirational quote. Most people do. And some facts, facts are awesome. And focus on different things each day. If you focus on that idea, that's a really good way to get it into your head of what you need to focus on and what maybe you even need to create. So you've got, for example, Monday, you'd share something from your website or your blog. Tuesday, share your video, Wednesday your photo, Thursday podcast, Friday your quote. So when we were talking about the things that we have, our own content, if you're looking around and you're thinking, oh, I don't have these for my website or my blog at the moment, 
that means you need to be creating those things, okay? And here's a few other ideas as well. You can do some cross promotion, guest writing, recipes, reviews, get involved with forums and discussions, mentoring, books, lots and lots of ideas. Um, one of the main things um, with social media, with websites, with blogs, even life, is commitment and consistency. So let's talk a, a bit about that. Um, you have to really be focused and you have to really commit. Um, so what we were talking about before, how to make money from blogs or how to get anywhere with blogs, you know, you have to um, really focus on what you have, what you need to create, how you're going to do it, how you're going to post, how you're going to interact with people. And it's, it's really time consuming. You know, one of my friends the other day was saying, I don't know how you run all your, all your websites and your social media pages and all your clients, you know. And I, I was sort of, I never really had someone say that as direct before. And I thought, wow, yeah, this was meant to help us. Like the internet and a lot of things are meant to help us. But, you know, a lot of us let it run our lives. And I've got a really good um, boundaries in place with my social media, but a lot of people don't. And um, you really have to be on board and updating and responding to people. You really have to be available to do that. And people expect you to be as well, which is another thing. Um, and you, yeah, you have to set expectations of when you're going to be able to be on board. So for example, mine are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do all my social media. So that's my sort of boundaries. I don't have anything like on my phone. I don't have notifications. I don't have things going off on my phone. I'm on my computer all the time. Do enough work on my computer. Don't need to be carrying it around with me. And um, it's better if you've got a lot of blogs, if you've got a lot of content, I encourage people to create them all in one day. So sit down, film your videos, sit down, do your podcasts, um, create all your quotes, go through and do all your photos and brand them up with your watermark on them. But then you can set the schedule of when you want to be posting them. So every Monday the blog's going out or every Tuesday I'm going to post the photos. And then you take a few, a few hours a month to go through and schedule all those things. And then you want to be interacting when you've done it. And it's much better to have those things in place. And I would suggest at least once a month you need something on your website new. And it's better to have those things that are ready to go and that you've scheduled rather than, oh my God, I've got this new blog. I'm going to blog every single day. Mm -hmm. And I'm blogging every day. Look at me do it. And you're blogging there and you've done it for a week. And then you're like, hell, this is a lot of work. And then there's nothing for like six months because you're completely overwhelmed with all that blogging you did for a month. So keep those things in mind. You want it to be consistent. And you just have to be really um, specific, I guess, with what goals you want to achieve. And um, know how to do it, know where your audience are, like we were saying before, what social media channel you need to be on, what sort of information your audience likes. And um, just, yeah, we, we used to say it was about six months. If you had a new page on social media, it took about six months to get anywhere. Um, nowadays, they say it's more like one to two years, and I would compare that to a new business. If starting a new business it takes you a couple of years to get somewhere, so keep that in mind. And um, you really want to be building your digital assets, creating your own content, and um, offering things. So, if you have some free ebooks, free information on how people can find out more information about being a healthy vegan or some vegan health coaching, things like that. You want to be getting people onto your website, getting their emails, give them something as well. And um, a good example I would give with this original content, for one of my clients, it's a bit of a hard sell, superannuation, so retirement. So Cruelty Free Soup is the name. It's Australia's only 100% vegan superannuation fund. Um, been working with them since 2010. And yeah, money, retirement, hard sell. Most people don't care, especially the vegans. And um, so 
we don't want to be just sharing text or information about it. We want to be giving people some sort of information they can learn, something a bit more visual. So some of the things we did, we did a Q&A series or an FAQ series. So I filmed my client, Lee, doing, um, answering information about particular questions we got asked over and over again. So the top 20 questions. And he's from the UK, I'm from Australia. They come over to Australia every year and we film all the content. We get together and create, create the content for each year when he's in Australia. And um, so sat down and we filmed this, the FAQs, okay? From those videos, I then transcribed those videos. From the videos, I detached the audio from them. So from just one video, I've already got three different types of content, okay? And so we've got videos that we can put on YouTube or Vimeo. We've got um, the transcription of the text, which can be converted into a blog, which can also be added onto our ebook that we're working on, and which I also use to create visuals of the information Lee's given on each of those subjects. And the other one was an audio, which we've used as podcasts. So think about from that just one thing I created, all those options that come from it. So try and think outside the square and you're creating stuff for, for yourself that covers all these different things. Does everyone get that? There's a lot of um, stuff online that's not necessarily factually based. I'm sure we're all aware of that and not just in regards to veganism. And the way of the world, I blame Facebook for a lot of it, um, is you know they encouraged us to create more visuals, more videos, more emotionally powered stuff. Not too much text, we don't want, people don't want to read the text anymore. So now we've got all these images and all these videos of people being really emotional and reactive about things because that's what people liked, because that's what gave people views or took people to websites and um, that's what I see a lot more nowadays and I think people are wising up a bit more to that now but I really would like you to focus on your own information finding out your own research just because someone you follow online shares something or says something's true does not necessarily mean it's true if you're sharing information about veganism, make sure it's actually true. Make sure it comes from a credible sort of source. If you're sharing nutritional information, there's some really great information and, inf and places that give this sort of information, like nutrition, nutritionfacts.org is a good one. Um, the Vegan Society over here, they have some really good information. And it's scientifically based information. That's what we want to be sharing. And I want you to focus on being better examples of compassion in action. Because we're meant, to, we're meant to care about animals, you know? We're meant to care about each other. So let's do it. <laughs> um, I just want you to think about a few things. And um, one of them is privilege. You know, a lot of us really don't appreciate the things that we have. And we're all able to come here today. We can pay to enter. We can walk around. Um, eat the food, you can sit here, you can watch what I'm saying, you can, I hope everyone can understand what I'm saying, I hope you can understand um, English, and it's really important to think about these things when you're interacting with other people and you're, when you're promoting other things, you know, because um, some people may not be on the same page as you, some people may not come from the same background as you, some people may not understand the things that you're talking about. And um, we all think that we know the best way to do things. And sorry to tell you, but sometimes we're not on the right page. You know, we can always learn from other people. And um, something I just want to say is that we all have choices, but some people have much better choices than other people. Okay. And just be really mindful of the language you're using online. And this is similar to what I was talking about yesterday with negativity online and online etiquette. You know, you have to be mindful of what you're doing. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are coming to veganism. There's a lot of new vegans wanting to learn stuff. So you want to be focusing on the way that you're promoting veganism. So the language that you're using, 
Is it positive or is it negative? Is it encouraging or discouraging? Is it empathetic or is it judgmental? Is it preaching or is it teaching? What about racist language? I've seen so many people being really racist in regards to say Japanese and whaling, um, China and the dog meat, Middle East and the um, live trade. You don't need to be calling people names, you don't need to be um, you know, saying horrible things to people. You want to be trying to create a conversation and learn from people. Why are you doing this? Why do you think this works? And be open to listening to. There's a lot of trigger words that a lot of people use all over the all over the place that people really might be affected with. And particular words would be concentration camps, slave, and rape. Those are words that might trigger someone and really truly upset them. And um, what we were talking about before about factually based um, health information. There's a lot of people that give unsolicited health advice all the time. You know, oh, I've got this problem or I'm in a wheelchair, go vegan. It will save you. It will clear everything up in your world. And it's not the case. There's so many different types of people. You're not a health practitioner. You shouldn't be giving health advice to people. And, um, you know, also there's a lot of people that come to veganism. If you've told people, go vegan, you'll lose weight. What happens when they go vegan and they're putting weight on? They're probably not going to stay vegan for very long if that's why they went vegan. So we want to be giving them information saying, hey, you can lose weight if you eat in a particular way. But now with the plethora of vegan foods and packaged stuff around, you may not. And um, there's different types of vegans, different types of bodies. We should be sharing all the different types of people. And I just think, you know, when you're aware of all the other aspects of that, that you don't need to be putting one type of group at the expense of promoting veganism. And we want people to commit to being vegan long term. We want it to be achievable. We want people to be able to be empowered and feel as though this is a great thing that they're doing. And um, we want people to be encouraged and veganism to feel inclusive. And a lot of people are really negative and mean and angry online. And that's really hurting the movement in a lot of cases. We want to encourage people whether or not they're vegan, whether or not they're vegan enough to be involved with promoting the movement, okay? And I compare that to like the LGBTQI community. There's a lot of people that support the stuff that they do and their aims. They're not necessarily lesbian, they're not necessarily gay, but they're, they're allies to the movement. And I think that veganism needs more allies to the movement. And um, they say that um, vegans are about, about 1 to 2% of the population, and that hasn't changed for about 20 years. There's more people who are consuming a plant-based diet, as in just focused on the food. There's more people that are eating more vegan food, but are they necessarily vegan? And there really just hasn't been enough long-term studies on this either. Um, if you want to focus on planting seeds instead of, instead of um, you know, converting someone, it's a good way to start. And just, yeah, learn from other people. And if you share what you're passionate about, that's the best way to start, the best thing to focus on. And keep in mind, everything you share online is permanent and it can look good or bad for you, for the group you're representing, for veganism in general. And make sure everyone uses the same information, not using abbreviations all the time, knows what things are appropriate to share and what's not. Um, if you want to say it to someone's face in person, don't say it online. Make sure you use correct spelling, grammar, punctuation, and consider how things will look for you. And I think, um, you know, vegans, we're meant to care about animals and be compassionate and be loving and you know humans we're animals too so let's not forget that and let's try and be a bit kinder to each other more compassionate and um, let's learn how to change all the different types of oppression not just veganism 
And um, I talk a lot about online etiquette and how to be nice to people online. So I just wanted to talk about a few things with that. Does anyone know the group DMOS over here, the think tank? So um, they do a lot of um, uh, they give a lot of information, do and get a lot um, of studies together. And this guy, Jamie Bartlett in particular, is in charge of the social media aspects. And he does a lot of studies in regards to how social media is used, like in terms of general election or, you know, many, many different things. And he's really awesome. I just went to his book launch when I was in Brussels um, last week. And he's got a book called Radicals. It's his new book and how um, different types of people that we may not most people wouldn't agree with their ideas how these people really might be the way of the future and because a lot of things that we all agree with now women voting black people having rights things like that a lot of people didn't agree with that in the beginning and people who came out with those ideas were seen as radical so anyway it's an awesome book but he gives this quote that i think is really good we are increasingly judging movements by their most aggressive rude or unlikable social media fans and that's not good news for anyone. He's not talking about veganism here, but there's a lot of people, um, the fans, or even the people that are sharing these things online that aren't a good representation of veganism. So I just wanna encourage everyone to be nice and to be kind, and um, just know that we can still have a disagreement I don't 100% agree with any vegan group or any person. I haven't met one person I 100% agree with. And there's nothing wrong with that. You want to be learning from people. You want to be having discussions and debates and know how to do it. And, you know, what you're doing reflects the whole movement. So really think about that when you're interacting with people. And you might, might be the only vegan someone's come in contact with or someone's seen online. And I've heard so many people say to me, I would have become vegan 10 years ago if it wasn't for that guy online that said this or did that. So really think about these sort of things. Here's another quote um, Ruth Bader um, gave in a New York Times article and um, she, someone was asking her about the good advice that she might share with others. And she said, yeah, I've got some good advice and it comes from my savvy mother-in-law. She gave her this advice on her wedding day. She said, in every good marriage, it helps sometimes to be a little deaf. And I like that. And I think that relates to online stuff as well. Just ignore most of the stuff. Does it matter? Does it really warrant you to waste two hours of your time back and forth with someone online? Does it warrant you sleeping, having some sleepless nights thinking about these dramas? Really, just let it go. Just pretend you're deaf on that idea. Um, with online etiquette, in case you're not aware, it just means to be courteous to others online. And um, it shouldn't be an afterthought. We shouldn't just be going, oh, I shouldn't have posted that yesterday. We should be conscious of what we're posting before we post it, before people are getting upset about it. And words are really powerful, they can motivate us and they can inspire us. And I love those sort of words. But they can also be harmful and they can really hurt people. So really think about the sort of words you use. And um, here's my top 10 tips for online etiquette. So you might want to take a photo of that if you like. And I think the biggest tip there, which is also a tip just in general for a good life, is act don't react. Act, don't react. Um, another one, keep private matters private. Use correct spelling, grammar and punctuation. Be mindful of what you share. Be conscious of who will read your posts. Be your kind self. Keep your passwords safe and hard to guess. If you see someone who's being mean to someone online, bullying people online, report it. Um, credit people if you use their creations and take responsibility for everything you do online. Okay? I just thought I'd give you some tips. I did a talk for um, a uh, women's, like a retreat sort of thing one time. So here was my 
here's my handout that I gave. And I think this is a good thing to focus on as well. You know, we want to, as activists, as vegans, on all the time, trying to promote veganism. Got to, yep, got to be on, on the best, on the best path all the time. Have to remember to take time out for yourself as well. Remember to exercise. Remember to sleep well. Remember to make time for things and prioritize the things that are important to you. Eat well. That's like more greens, less processed stuff, things like that. And really be grateful. You know, a lot of us just, you know, we're here, this is great, but we don't really appreciate what we've got. So take the time to be grateful. Go outside, get away from digital advices, devices. Be inspired by people. There's lots of inspirational stuff out there. Yes, you have to search for it sometimes, but it's out there. Be creative. Read an actual physical book. And um, some words I love, prioritise, organise and delegate. Make sure you prioritise the things you love and organise how it's going to work in your life, where you're going to fit it in. Delegate things for other people to do you don't want to do or can't do. Um, here's some tips for digital detox, which, you know, a lot of people are addicted all the time. We let these things rule our lives. If on your phone you've got notifications every time someone comments on something you've posted, like something you've posted, comments on your friend's auntie, something you've posted, probably time you're taking those notifications off your phone. Um, schedule your time to check things, whether it's your text, whether it's your emails. You don't have to be taking, you don't have to be checking your emails every single time you get a, a, a little beep or something on your phone. Um, for security, every time you use something, whether it's on your phone or on your computer, make sure you log out of it. I know that's annoying, but it's really helpful. And people just can't, you just want to get into that habit of logging out every time you log in. Um, you've heard of a thing called a watch or a clock? You know, they're really good to tell the time and to wake you up in the morning, have an alarm on them. You don't need your phone for that. If you're going to bed and the last thing you're looking at is your phone, if when you're waking up in the morning, the first thing you're looking at is your phone, that's a bit of a problem. Um, I always have my phone on silent. I don't want to be interrupted when I'm doing stuff. And I encourage people to use silent more. And I, I can't stand um, when someone's not being attentive to me or present when we're having lunch. We're sitting there and they're on their phone checking something. I'm like, I should have brought my book. This would have been a lot more entertaining. And leave your phone at home sometimes. That's really cool. Feels great. And if you have some connections you don't like on social media, you don't like hearing the things that they share, you're allowed to not be friends with this person. You're allowed to block them. You're allowed to report what they say. You don't have to delete them as a friend. You can just block what they say from your news feed as well. If you're a bit worried about that. And make sure you check your privacy settings on everything because there's a lot of things that change all the time. In particular, with Facebook, every few months they change privacy settings. If you go in and have a look at a lot of the things you're just naturally agreeing with, you, it'd freak you out, freaks me out. Um, remember to have daily routines that you can commit to, positive things. Um, remember to say yes to things you like and no to things you don't want to do, can't do. And learn something new. It's really important to learn new things. Spend quality time with people or the animals that you love. That's, that's pretty important. Commit to something different. Commit to something new. Get up from your desk. Do some stretches. I'm always at my desk. Always sitting down. So it's really important to get up, stretch, do some exercise, get out of the house, away from the computer. Make lists. Um, one thing I learned this year was um, with being the new president of the Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland, um, we've got a long, a long to-do list. And I just took over from a lady who'd been doing it for about 20 years or something. So there's a lot of things, we've had a lot of transition issues. And my to-do list seems never-ending, as most people's to-do lists are. So one of the things that I learned this year was to have a separate list of things we'd achieved or things I've achieved. So if you compare those two each other, 
and you're like, wow, my things I've achieved. I've done quite a lot this year. I'm pretty awesome. You've still got some other things you're working on, but just remind yourself of those things first. And always ask for help. If you need help from someone, if you don't want to do something, if you can't do something, there's nothing wrong with asking. Okay, just wrapping up. These are the things we've done today. We've worked out the best and most popular channels to use online, how to do an audit for social media, some things to focus on, why visuals are important, how to create branded content and shareable content ideas, how to set goals and to see them through, online etiquette and some tips for taking time out. And remember that information you share about you or about yourself, about your company is the only thing that you really have control over online. Whatever happens after you post something has nothing to do with you anymore. And use the internet as a marketing tool. And just remember, it's all about being social. It's about cultivating relationships. And if you're putting effort, it constantly... Um, effort and commitment and consistency into your brand, you'll be sharing things with people and you'll be getting followers and be successful. And some things I would suggest is keep up to date with what's happening in the vegan movement. Um, you know, get involved with events, get involved with groups. You don't have to agree with everything they do or say, but we can still learn so many things from other groups and people. Support other events. Attend things that you can and keep an open mind. You can, when I first went vegan, when I was creating my vegan tribe, I just was friends with every vegan that I could be. I didn't really care about anything more than that. But then I, you know, went through and was a bit more selective about the people I like to hang out with now. And take some time out for yourself. Um, some things that you can easily do today is to change your email signature, join some new pages or follow some people, retweet something that you like, comment on your favourite blog, share a video online, sign up to receive some emails, and if you're um, in a position of influence, make sure you use it for good. Um, remember to investigate and read more, research things more, don't just share things. Be honest and genuine. Help to build our community and believe that you're part of the change that this world needs. Lead by example and be consistent. That's probably the biggest amount of advice I can give 20 years of vegan. Lead by example, be consistent. And um, you can connect with my website, Vivula Be Vegan Online. There's across the top here is all the social media channels I'm on. And um, you can also connect with me and find out more about my European adventures. And I hope that you've learned something today. And if you've learned something today, please share it with someone else. And thank you very much. <laughs>